Hey guys, welcome to Windshine Audio. A quick start guide of the every 12th anniversary edition. Today you are not going to see my face, just my hand moving around. When you first receive this unit, please do not rush to power it up. There are these two stickers at the back. This sticker covers the IEC power socket where you may peel it off before plugging in the power cord. The reason why we have this sticker is that the unit comes with a power switch at the bottom where you may switch it to 120 for the US or 240 for Europe, UK or Singapore like me. So this power switch changes the input voltage of the Aries 12 and please switch it to the correct voltage before buckling in the power cord. So, so once the switch is confirmed, uh, confirmed to your AC mains voltage, you may peel this guy off and plug in the power cord. And let me do this gently. Yeah, it's coming out. Right. So this is where the power cord will connect it to. And there's this sticker here for the I2S HDMI connector. I2S has no industrial standard and most of the manufacturer use HDMI connector because of the superior quality of the HDMI connector and this cable. But please do not connect this HDMI connector to Blu-ray player HDMI output or computer HDMI output. This is not a typical HDMI um, multimedia interface. It is a purpose-built I2S HDMI over HDMI. So if you do not use HDMI, you may leave this sticker stick to cover the HDMI connector. Or if you use HDMI, where I'm going to demonstrate later, where I'll be peeling off this sticker right away. At the back of the unit, we have USB input, optical input, and coaxial input. So depending on your source, you may connect this USB cable to a computer or a streamer, coaxial cable to your transport or CD player or a streamer, optical cable from your transport or a streamer to the average tool. There are RCA and XLR output. The output are shared. It is not recommended to connect both output at the same time. Connecting RCA and XLR output at the same time may have an adverse effect on the sound quality. We recommend to use the XLR output. It is a true balance deck. Using XLR output, you will have better sound quality, but if your downstream equipment is single-ended, you may use the RCA output. It will work just fine. On the front panel, I'm gonna power up this guy to show you the front panel LED. And what I have here is a power cord, a basic one that comes with the Aries 12. XLR cable connected to my preamp. And USB cable connected to my MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna use the USB input for now. Once the power cord is plugged in, turn on the power switch at the back and you will be able to see a very tiny red colored LED light up here. Let me see. Yeah, it is light up. So this tells us that the unit is power on, the unit is in standby, the standby red LED turn on. Hit on the standby button once, you should see the last selected input light up where it is a USB input and the sampling rate LED should display the sampling rate that it is connect it is receiving from the computer which is 44.1 let me have a pointer which is i think oh, it's hard to see the it's hard to see the sampling rate on my angle here but let me just quickly run through the input selection usb input where once you click hit on the usb input the usb led turn on coaxial input just in case you want to use coaxial input the coaxial led turn on optical input I squares input. So these are the input selection of the Aries 12. So there are four input, USB, coaxial, optical, and I squares. Okay, there are a few cup up a couple more buttons here where you it allows you to change it change the some of the configuration mode of the Aries 12. The obvious one will be the NOS and OS button. By toggling this button, you will see the NOS LED turn on and off. When the LED is on, the DAC is configured in NOS mode, non-oversampling mode. The signal that is feeding to the DAC 
will not be up sampled, will not be processed, it will, it will be sent right away to the R2R circuitry. So it is a true NOS stack. When it is in OS mode, the NOS LED turned off. In OS mode, there are two filters. One is sharp filter, the other one is slow filter. It can be configured by hitting the mute button once and toggle the optical button. So as you toggle the optical button, you'll see the NOS LED turn on and off along with some other LED turn on, which I can tell here is the USB LED as well as the coaxial LED and the optical LED. When the NOS LED is on, as you toggle the optical button in filter configuration mode, it is in slow filter. When the NOS LED is off, it is in sharp filter. So you may change the filter of oversampling mode to suit your needs or suit your taste. I'll leave it at slow filter. Right, this is the filter configuration. The last configuration we are going to go through will be the ISQS where I'll be doing it later with an Iris DDC. Right, let me just select USB input and it is connected to my MacBook Pro and play some music. It is a DSD128, DSC80 LED on. <coughs> Sorry for the COVID. I'm still having this persistent cough quite often. Two times LED on, excuse me. So it is receiving DSD128 from the MacBook Pro over Rune to the deck. And uh, this is in exclusive mode. So whatever Rune play on the Mac computer, the sampling rate will be displayed in bit perfect on the deck itself. So this is, the deck is receiving DSD128, right. If you are familiar with Rune, you may change the sampling rate using the DSP. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me just try the maximum sampling rate. Hit on the play button. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, let me just play another track. Okay, it is sub-sample to 705.6. The DSD LED off it tells us that it is playing PCM. And 705.6 will get 8 times and 2 times LED turned on. So 44.1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 8 is 705.6. So this tells us that the sampling rate on the average 12 is receiving from the computer is 705.6 kHz. So now, let's look at the NOS LED. NOS is off right now, so the deck is doing oversampling to the signal. If you want to use NOS, just toggle this button. When the NOS LED is on, it is in non-oversampling mode, where the signal that is feeding to Aries 12 will not be altered and it will be processed and um, for the R2R circuitry, circuitry right away. Right. The interesting thing about Aries 12 is the I2S input. I'm going to show you how to connect the I2S input to an Iris DDC. So this is the Iris DDC. What I'm going to do is turn off the Aries 12, unplug the cable, and locate my HDMI cable. It was not on my desk yet. Right, at the back of the unit, you'll see I2S output and I2S input. And all you need is an I2S cable. Sorry for the cable. <laughs> Sorry for the mess. And this is the I2S cable. So there's no I2S cable per se on the market. This is the HDMI cable from a, a well-known cable manufacturer, but it is in very it is very low cost. So we always use simple cable for testing. Um, connect the I2S cable from Iris to the Iris 12. Here we are, simple connection. And flip it to the back. I'm gonna to, to I'm gonna connect power cord for the iris. Power cord for the iris 12. 
and the USB cable has to be connected to Iris DDC where the computer will see Iris DDC and the Iris DDC will process the signal and output i squares over this short HDMI cable to the Iris 12 I hope the camera phone is able to focus clearly and let's see okay Iris is on the USB already is on and 44.1 kilohertz is on and average 12 we need to hit on the standby button to turn on this guy let me see okay flip the switch at the back to turn on average 12 standby LED on turn on the average 12 select i squares i squares has no industrial standard Tina Phillips has this i squares pinout configuration mode on the Iris 12, Pontus 2, Venus 2, Terminator Plus, and Terminator 2 deck to configure the I2S pinout. There are seven, no, oh, sorry, there are eight modes from mode 000 to 111. So we use, we make use of the front panel push button as well as the LED status to tell us the configuration pinout mode that is currently configured on the Iris 12. So I2S on Iris 12 is configurable. If you use I2S, please watch another video that I have taken in the past where you need to configure the I2S to work correctly with the transport be it the Iris DDC or other DDC from the market or I2S transport available on the market to make sure that the I2S pinout matches for both transport and the DAC It is very important because mismatch of I2S pinout will result in loud noise and the excessive noise is harmful not only to the loudspeaker, it's also, whole, it's also harmful to the electronic. So please be sure that if you want to use I2S, please be extra careful. But it is not so difficult per se. If you practice a little bit of cautions and understand the, how I2S work, it will be quite rewarding when you use I2S. Right, how to configure the I2S pin out on the Aries 12? Select I2S, I2S LED turn on. Again, it's hard to see from my angle here. The LED is so small. Hit on the mute button once, and hit on and toggle the I squares button multiple times. As I toggle this I squares button, you see that one X, two X, and four X LED turn on and off in a fashion where all the LED off denote zero zero zero, and all the LED on denotes. 111. So there are 000 to 111 mode. There are total 8 modes of binary configuration available on the Aries 12 for you to configure the I2S mode. I'll leave it to mode 000 where I have tested this I2S as matches the Iris DDC on this particular HDMI cable. So this I2S mode 000 on Aries 12 works with this I2S cable, the HDMI cable, as well as the Iris DDC. So now let us play some test tone. Um, it is provided by one of my good friend Jeffrey Richards, where he recorded the left right channel test tone in PCM and DSD, as well as the in phase and out of phase polarity check in both PCM and DSD. These test tones are available to download in the link below. So please download this test tone and run through this test tone as you configure the i squares. If it is the first time that you configure the i squares, please turn down the volume of your amplifier to make sure even when the noise is being played due to incorrect i squares pinout configuration, the noise generated or emitting from the loudspeaker will not be so loud. Right. Turn down the volume, hit on the play button to play the test tone. And before I forget, I should turn off the upsampling so that it plays its native format. Let me turn on louder. Sorry, I forget the XLR cable. Right, please remember to connect the XLR cable outputs to the preamp or to the amplifier so that we can hear the Aries 12 in action. Right. Turn down the volume again. Hit on the play button. This is the right channel. Right channel play correctly in right PCM. Channel. Next one will be DSD. This DSD already right turned on. 
DSD already turned on. Right now we notice the right channel is played incorrectly for DSD. This is the left I'll channel. go through that later. This is left the channel left for channel. PCM play correctly. And I will know that left channel for DSD will this play the on the right channel. loudspeaker. This is okay, the I'll pause channel. here. DSD I2S pinout and PCM I2S pinout are two completely different things. So, Aris 12 comes with this feature to swap the I2S pinout for DSD channel. So, how do we do this? In I2S mode, hit on the mute button once, toggle the coaxial button. I do not know whether this is the better way, right? Toggle the coaxial button, you'll notice that the op OPT LED turn on and off. So this changes the DSD left and right channel for I2S. And this configuration will not affect the PCM I2S left right channel. It only apply for DSD I2S left right channel. So I'll leave it at off and it should be the correct mode as I have tried it earlier. I'll play the playlist again. Right channel DSD, this is sorry, right, right channel, channel PCM, play correctly on this the right. Is the right channel. This is the right channel, channel DSD, play on the right, the right loudspeaker channel. correctly. And the next track will be left PCM. This is the left channel. Left PCM, play correctly on this the left loudspeaker. The left and the next one will be left DSD. This is the left channel. Left DSD play this correctly the on the left loudspeaker. And then next track will be the in phase and out of phase for PCM. My voice is in phase. In phase. My voice for PCM. is in phase. My voice is out and of phase. And this is the out of phase. My voice is out of phase. And the next test tone will be the in phase and out of phase for DSD. My voice is in DSD phase. already on. DSD My already on. In phase. In phase and out of phase play My correctly. Is out of phase. So after going through the test tone, you will know that the left right channel in phase and out of phase play correctly for both PCM and DSD. And at this point in time, you're pretty sure that the I2S is configured correctly and you may start playing your favorite playlist at your normal listening volume in peace of mind. Right, I think that's about it. A short video for you i think it takes some time and i hope you enjoy this video and i'll see you next time bye bye